Jane Jamison Field. It is Polar Bear football as tonight the Fairmont Senior Polar Bears go up against the Bridgeport Indians. Hi, I'm Jeff Carpenter along with Ray Frazier ready to bring you the story tonight. This is the game for both teams on their schedules as the season gets underway. They look at this one and think this is the big game on our schedule. That's certainly the case for the Polar Bears tonight who come in at 3-0. and Bridgeport is 2-1. and the Indians are coached by Tyler Ferris. He's in his third season. He's been really successful. He's won 22 of 25 games for an 880 winning percentage. At all time, he's 2-0 against the Polar Bears. I checked in with him before the game to get just a little bit of an update on, well, well his team is playing right now. Uh, you know, we had to, a lot of kids that are not new to the program, but kind of new to some different positions. So we're really hoping that they hone in and get a little bit better, you know, week by week. When you play tough physical opponents, you know, you really have a way to either get better or, you know, find where you're really deficient. So we're hoping we can step forward a little bit. This Fairmont-Bridgeport rivalry, each school has its own county rival but there's something special about this one. Yeah, I mean, the kids know each other so well. You know, you start talking about, you know, how a team's going to line up and where, they, and both, you know, both teams, I'm sure, can say, oh, that's going to be this kid and that's going to be this kid, and they know him by name. So, yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's a big rivalry with two really, really good programs. And it's, it's interesting because both of these teams have been successful but have done it totally differently. Yeah, and that just this is a great thing about football. It shows, you know, it can be done in multiple ways and multiple facets. So it's the it's best, team, best team game there is. Now, you really haven't faced a team like Fairmont. Fairmont certainly hasn't faced a team like Bridgeport. How does that change this matchup? Uh, you know, we're so familiar. I think Fairmont Senior and, you know, Morgantown have probably played us more than, you know, than anybody. So, you know, when these kids were in middle school, freshmen, JV, you know, they've, they've been able to see, you know, our offense and uh, the way that we do things and, and the same thing back and forth. So I don't think it's a huge learning curve, but at the same time, you know, it is something you know, that you'll see a little bit of a feeling out process early in the game. And what's your scouting report on this polar bear team? Very athletic. I mean, very good, very good in multiple positions. Uh, the, you know, the hours uh, kid is, is fantastic in the backfield, uh, lining up. Quarterback's fantastic. You know, really got a good pocket awareness, really extends plays. Um, you know, can, can keep the ball down, push the ball down the field and get rid of it quickly. So uh, he, he's a total package. He's very tough. Um, and then, you know, line-wise, it just looks like they're improving every week. That's Tyler Ferris, the head coach of the Bridgeport Indians. And Ray Frazier sitting beside me has already had a chance to prepare his scouting report. Tell me about Bridgeport. Like uh, tonight, I, I would say we're going to see, uh, you know, a lot of traditional uh, Bridgeport with the, the blocking schemes uh, that we're accustomed to, a lot of a lot of doubling down and, and kicking out, uh, a lot of power concepts. Uh, you know, they'll have some perimeter uh, game as well. But, uh, you know, it's it's this a traditional old school uh, offense, the single wing, and so there's a lot of deception they'll try to use. So like Coach Bardick said, we'll have to really, uh, you know, pay attention to our keys and make sure we're doing that. Defensively, we're going to get a 4-3. I think they're going to try to commit as few resources to the box and try to use uh, their strength against the run game and uh, try to keep as, as few people in the box as they can. So uh, we've got to you know, we've got to find a way to run the ball and have some established run, run game. Um, I think special teams are going to be huge tonight. I think that's something that uh, we've really played well so far, and I think it can be a really a big difference in this game tonight. I think we've got to establish run, stop the run, and protect the football. And for the Polar Bears, one of the keys will be the play of quarterback Brody Whitehair, who had his coming out party here as a freshman when he completed eight of nine passes for almost 300 yards. And I asked him how well he remembers that game. Well, you know, I've been studying all week. The team's been, you know, pretty good in practice. You know, I'm looking forward to the atmosphere. You know, love playing Bridgeport at Bridgeport. It's a big matchup. Big, big game this season, so you know we're all looking forward to it. Or yeah, what do you remember great. about your first game at Bridgeport? Uh, yeah, I definitely say just you know the confidence I had eventually, you know, completing all the passes and you know, trust the, the fun I felt and the atmosphere. I just remember you know looking up and I saw my uh, all my family cheering for me real loud. That meant a lot to me. So you know I'm looking forward to you know just experiencing the atmosphere and you know, fueling the fire. Tell me about the pressure that you're going to receive tonight because the first three games you haven't had that much pressure as a quarterback tonight. 
you may have to tuck it and run a little bit. How prepared are you for that? Uh, you know, I'm pretty prepared. I trust my line, you know, but I think if, you know, it comes down to me having to run, I trust my legs and I trust my receivers to block downfield. They have been doing a really good job of that all season. That's Brody Whitehair, the Polar Bear Junior quarterback. Calling him a junior and looking at all the experience he's had, Ray, that seems kind of unusual. But uh, Brody really played well here two years ago, and he played well last year against Bridgeport. Yeah, and I think that's going to pay dividends because, you know, when he gets in this environment tonight, uh, I think it's something that he's excited about. He's uh, The moment's not going to be too big for him tonight. I mean, he's, he's been in this environment. Uh, I know he'll be ready to go, no question. This game is going to start with the Polar Bears getting the football, and the interesting thing about that is Fairmont's on a three-game streak of scoring a special team's touchdown in each of its first three. And Dylan Hours is the key to all of that, and he is back deep to return. It's going to be Zach Rorick kicking off for the Indians, and he tees the ball up on the near hash marks, and he'll kick it from right to left. Bridgeport wearing brand new all-black uniforms tonight, red trim, red helmets, white numbers, and the polar bears in the white jerseys, royal blue pants, and white helmets. The officials have given Rorick the signal, and he is ready to approach the ball from right to left, and this big Big Ten battle just about ready to get underway. Here is Rorick's kick, high, end over end, and Hours comes up and gets it at the 15. Goes to the left and gets up to the 20. Gets outside of the 25, he's at the 30, and is run out of bounds at about the 35-yard line, and that's where the Polar Bears go first down and 10. Yeah, good return by Hours, and uh, again, as we, as we said, the, the field position battle is going to be huge tonight. And getting to start at your own 36-yard line, that's a plus for the Polar Bears. They'll have the football on the far hash marks. That means they're, they're closer to their sidelines on the left. And they send five out. Three to the left, two to the right. Empty backfield for White here on a first down and 10. And Brody is back to pass. Quick pass comes to Hours. He catches it at the 35. He's at the 40, the 45, the 50. There he goes. Inside the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. He's into the end zone, but... There is a flag down back at the 38-yard line. I don't know if this is coming back, but he got a really good block from Richmond, it looked like, on that play. Don't know what the penalty is, though. It's going to be holding against the Polar Bears. So you'll scratch that touchdown. That is something that is typical. We have seen it before. And a holding penalty will call that play back. The flag is actually set down at the 42, so the gain would be from the 36 to the 42. So you'll get a six-yard gain and then assess a 10-yard penalty and run the play again. Yeah, something to keep an eye on, Jeff. Uh, Bridgeport's playing a very light box that time, uh, only five men in the box. So uh, that's something to kind of keep an eye on and see if we can win those battles up front in the run game. So the 10-yard penalty takes the football back to the 32-yard line. And it's going to be first down and 14 for Fairmont Senior. Damani Johnson lines up behind quarterback Whitehair. Two receivers left and right. Short drop for Whitehair. Looks now chased out of the pocket. Runs to the far side. Off balance throw downfield intended for Michael. Goes out of bounds. Incomplete pass. And it's going to be second down and 14. Yeah, got a little pressure on that left side and uh, kind of disrupted uh, Brody on that play. Uh, made him get rid of it a little sooner than he wanted to. Canfield and Jones are wide outs to the right side. Dinger and Michael are wide to the left. Hours in the backfield behind Whitehair. It's second down and 14. Fairmont with the ball at its own 32-yard line. Play clock at 10 as Whitehair calls the signals. And he's play action pass. He's hit and he's dropped for a loss back at the 27-yard line. They bring edge pressure that time on both sides. They bring both outside linebackers up and uh, they move the kind of number that time. Five yard loss for Whitehair. Now it's going to be third down and about 19 to go for the Polar Bears. The football back at the 27 yard line. Fairmont needs to get it to the 46 for a first down. Third and long, empty backfield. Third down and 19. Whitehair gets the snap. 
Back to throw, steps up in the pocket, sends it downfield, and overthrows his intended receiver at the 45-yard line. That was Dylan Hours diving for the ball, couldn't get it, and the Polar Bears are forced to punt. Well, not the way we want to start this game. We, uh, we need to get a good punt this time and good coverage. Yeah, you go from scoring to now punting from deep in your own territory. So the Polar Bears thought they were up six to nothing, but only find themselves now looking at a fourth down and 19, and Michael will be doing the putting. Good snap, punts it away, high but short. End over end, and it is going to hit and take a Polar Bear roll inside the 40, and it'll be a nice roll as it's going all the way down to about the 32-yard line. That'll be a 41-yard punt for Gavin Michael and a first down coming up for Bridgeport. The clock shows 10 minutes and 40 seconds on the change possession. So defensively for the Polar Bears, it'll look just a little bit different. Luke Abrazino out for the rest of the season, suffered a knee injury last week. Front line for the Polar Bears will be Arbogast, Angeline, Richmond, Bracero, and Bridgeport comes out now in that single wing, and the snap goes to Rorig wide to the left side, and he is brought down at about the line of scrimmage. Maybe gets a yard. Nice play by Polar Bears' Gavin Michael, second down and nine, and Zach Rorig is their leading rusher. He's a senior. Bridgeport averages 470 yards on the ground per game, and they have not completed a pass yet this season in six attempts. Second down coming up. The ball at the 34-yard line. Second down for the Indians, and there is Love right up the middle. He gets it over the 35 to about the 36. Going to be third down and long for Bridgeport, though. That's only going to be a gain of two. So third down and seven coming up for the Indians. Great job by Arbogast being stout in the middle. Uh, those in tier three, three <coughs> excuse me, tonight are going to be really important. The ball is at the 36. And it's going to be third down, seven yards to go for Bridgeport now. Indians in that single wing formation, they rarely ever throw it. And there is the counter play. It comes to Hathaway. Hathaway gets the first down out over the 40, the 45, and up to about the 46-yard line. Yeah, we talked about in the pregame about, uh, you know, the deception and can't get caught uh, in the back, looking in the backfield. you got to read your keys in front of you, and we got to do that when they run the counter play like they did right there. That's the wing back, and he runs that counter play more than anything else. And it is going to be first and 10 Bridgeport at its own 47-yard line. The Indians moving from right to left. They're on the near hash marks right in front of us. The wing back is Hathaway to the right. Snap comes to Love off the right side. Love hits, breaks a tackle at the 50, then dives down to about the 48-yard line. Yeah, Arbogast makes the tackle. Sorry, Ray. Sorry, Jeff. They, they pull the uh, the guard and the tackle on the front side and and, uh, and just try to get a kick out block and turn up and uh, and they and they got some good blocking on the right side. A six-yard gain for. Josh Love, he and Rorig are the two backs for the Indians. Love is 5'9", 175, and Rorig is 5'10", 180. Second and four from the Fairmont, 47. Toss comes back to Rorig, and he is snowed under at about the line of scrimmage. Angeline and Michael in on the stop for the Polar Bears. A yard gain. It's going to be third down and three. Nice play by Angeline. Uh, Arbogast is very disruptive on that play. And uh, if he can get a push there in the middle, that really helps uh, disrupt everything that they try to do with their blocking scheme. So that, that's going to be big. Game clock is at 735 here in the first quarter. There is no score. Fairmont had possession first. Had a touchdown called back. It's at the Fairmont 46-yard line. Indians in that single wing formation. 
Snap comes back to Rory, running wide to the left side. He gets a block and takes it inside the 40, down to the 35, and then run out of bounds. It's an Indian first down at the Fairmont 34. It'll be a 12-yard game. Yeah, that's what you got to watch. They, they, they'll they run inside in between the tackles, and they'll try to get everything bottled up, and then all of a sudden they, they'll attack the perimeter. So uh, we have to be ready on the edge to come up and, uh, and make plays. Ball set down on the near hash marks at the 34-yard line. The Indians, most always in a tight formation. Blocking back is Aiden Sparks, their wing back, Tanner Hathaway. Snap goes to Rorig. Rorig off the right side. Gets an opening, takes it inside the 30, down to the 20. Dinger after him inside the 10 and pushes him out of bounds inside the five yard line at the four. Now they step back and mark it at the five, but Bridgeport is in business, first down and goal from the five yard line. Yeah, they just come with the traditional power play and uh, get the kick out block and uh, it was pretty well executed. First down and goal. Now they've moved the ball to the far hash marks. Break out of the huddle. No change in the personnel. Rorick and Love, either one could get the snap from the center in this unbalanced line. Snap goes to Love. There's the counterplay to Hathaway. Hathaway is grabbed, but carries tacklers with him into the end zone. It's a Bridgeport touchdown. Yeah, got to give him credit, his second effort, and uh, he kept driving his feet, and he, he got in the end zone. The Indians ready to attempt the extra point. Avery Williams will kick, but the tee was, or the holder wasn't there. So the holder's run out. He's got plenty of time, but he's only kicked in one game this season. Avery Williams, I mean, his extra point kick is up, and it is good. Time out on the field, 6.57 to go. First quarter from Bridgeport. It's the Indians 7, Fairmont nothing on 93.1 WFGM. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design and build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. So Bridgeport scores on its first possession and has a 7-0 lead midway through the first quarter here in Bridgeport. Now it's just time for Dylan Hours to return the kickoff for a touchdown and even things up again. Rorig first time kicked off from the near hash marks. This time he's kicking off from the center of the field. First time he did kick it to Dylan Hours. And Dylan is the deep receiver for the Polar Bears now. Rorig ready to kick off. Right-footed kick, downfield line drive, and Hours catches it on the 13. To the near side, it's at the 20, the 25, the 30, still running, and gets it up to the 33-yard line. Stop was made by Josh Love for Bridgeport. We just need to settle down, Jeff, and, and just get something going. Uh, we had the big play and got it called back on the first drive. Uh, can't go three and out here. We've got to get something going. The two receivers to the near side are Jones and Canfield. Michael and Dinger are receivers to the left. Dylan Hours lines up behind the quarterback. And Dylan gets the ball off the right side, out over the 35 and up to the 37-yard line, maybe the 36. It'll be a gain of, let's say, three yards, make it second down and seven. Yeah, pretty well defended, but still positive uh, uh, rush on, on first down, second and seven is manageable. On the near hash marks, Fairmont moves left to right, trailing seven to nothing. 
This time Hours is to the right of White here. He's back to pass. Sets up, fires downfield for Jones. He's got it at the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. He's into the end zone. It's a polar bear touchdown. It's a 64-yard touchdown pass from Brody White here to Navon Jones, and the Polar Bears trail 7-6. to six. Jeff, that was a laser by Brody White here. Nice throw, uh, pretty good protection that time as well. He was able to step into his throw. Uh, like to see that. Nice job. Polar Bears ready to attempt the extra point now. It's going to be Cam Peschel kicking from left to right. He's 22 for 22 this season. Canfield will be holding. Trevor Bigelow is the long snapper. Snap down, ball on the tee, the kick is up, and the kick is good. Time out on the field with 6.13 to go. First quarter from Bridgeport. It's Fairmont Senior 7, Bridgeport 7 on Fun 93-1. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmered chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. The first quarter, a tutorial on these two teams. Bridgeport methodically moves it down and scores on the ground. The Polar Bears come back and score in a couple of plays. And Fairmont has tied the game at seven. Yeah, you won't find a better throw than Brody just made there. And, uh, and, just a, and it was a great route as well. Um, but very encouraged by the protection by the O-line. Binger ready to kick for Fairmont. From left to right. He's become a... Pretty good onside kicker. And here is his kick. End over end and short at the 15 yard line. It is caught by Love and he breaks a tackle and fumbles the ball and the Polar Bears may have it. At the 34 yard line, the Polar Bears have the ball. Josh Love hit on the kickoff return and the Polar Bears have the ball at the 30 four yard line, there is a flag on the play. Thornton recovering the fumble for the Polar Bears. Tavion is a senior. First year playing football. Let's hear the call from the referee. Holding called against Bridgeport. Penalty is refused. Polar Bears have possession of the ball with 6.07 to go in the first quarter. And the game tied 7-7. Jeff, we've said it all year. The, these special teams, especially in particular this kick return, this kick uh, coverage team, has been excellent all year. Come up with a huge play right there. Polar Bears come to the line of scrimmage but need their own ball. Fairmont. Hayhurst, left tackle. Richmond, left guard. Then Arbogast at center. Angeline, right guard. Bigelow right tackle. In the slot to the right is Canfield. Wide right is Jones. On the other side, Michael in the slot and Dinger wide. Here is White here. Back to pass. Swing pass to the far side. Caught by Hours. Looking for a block. Takes it to the sidelines. Along the line of scrimmage and he's brought down. No gain on the play. Yeah, he got a block from Gavin Michael on the on the edge, but just couldn't break free. They had uh, had a couple defenders there that he couldn't get away from. It'll be a one-yard loss and makes it second down and 11 for the Polar Bears. Fairmont now, you would guess, is in four-down territory. Game tied, 7-7, 5.35 to go here in the first quarter. Empty backfield set for Whitehair, and he's back to throw. He's getting pressure now. Coming this way, off balance, just throws the ball towards the sidelines, out of bounds, incomplete. 
Yeah, with the protection that time kind of broke down. We uh, we we kind of opened our hips that time, and then they got uh, they got an inside leverage on the pass rush. So we got to be a little more stout. So third down, eleven. The ball back at the 35. This drive started after the Bridgeport fumble at the Indians 34. We're down and long coming up for the Polar Bears now. Only one running play tonight for the Bears. This time Whitehair gets it and he's running with it to the left side and he's hit after he takes the ball inside the 35 to about the 33 yard line. He'll get a couple, but it's going to be fourth and long for the Polar Bears. Yeah, Bridgeport's very stout against the run, uh, but we've, we've got to stay committed to it. Uh, it it's going to pay off because we have to be able to do that to, uh, to help us in the pass game. It's a three-yard gain, and now fourth down and eight yards to go for the Polar Bears. The ball at the 31-yard line in Indians territory. And Fairmont sends three receivers to the right side. Whitehair needs to have time now on this fourth down play. He's getting pressure and timeout called by Bridgeport, Bridgeport at the line of scrimmage. Timeout Indians, 4.40 to go, first quarter. Fairmont 7, Bridgeport 7 on 93.1 WFGM. General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. You keep us going. Thank you. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. game at Wayne Jamison Field in Bridgeport. We have 440 to go in the first quarter and each team has a touchdown. 7-7 the score. Bridgeport calls the timeout and the Polar Bears come out with twin receivers right and left. Hours alongside White here on this fourth down play. Brody back to pass. Steps up in the pocket, fires to the sidelines, and the pass is caught. It's a Polar Bear first down. Dingers got it inside the 25-yard line. Yeah, a lot better protection that time. Great job by that O-line, and uh, Brody had time to step up, and uh, he delivered the ball in time. A nine-yard pass play. Hours was there to help as a blocker, and the Polar Bears now go first down and 10. Ball at the 23, and here is Whitehair on a keeper off the left side, and he's going down for a loss back at the 27-yard line. Yeah, Giving a little bit too much penetration uh, in the run game, we're trying to run Brady there, and uh, we just we just have to be a little more firm there on in the run game. It'll be a loss of five yards on the play, back to the twenty, now back to the twenty-eight, a four-yard loss, and it's going to be second down and fourteen. Second down and fifteen. Football marked at the twenty-eight yard line. White here has hours behind him, and he sends Canfield in motion in front of him. White here back to pass. To the far side, the pass is overthrown, intended for Canfield along the far side. Overthrown, incomplete. Defending on the play was Donovan Williams for the Indians, and it's third and 14 for the Polar Bears. Yeah, Bridgeport's coming pretty hard up the field. Uh, you know, I would look as this game goes on, I wouldn't be surprised to see some type of draw or screen game because, uh, you know, that's something we need to slow their pass rush down a little bit. Third down, 14 for the Polar Bears. The line of scrimmage is the Bridgeport 28, 7-7 seven, seven the score. White here lines up in the pistol formation. Dylan Hours is behind him. And Brody is back to pass. He has time, sends it to the near side, and the pass is caught at the 23-yard line, caught by Canfield, breaks free, gets down to the 20, and inside the 20 to about the 19. And there's a flag thrown on the play. Looks like another holding penalty is going to be called. Flag on the play. Just... 
holding called against the Polar Bears. Called against Angeline. Line of scrimmage was the 28. And this is going to take the ball back to the 38. So it's a 10 yard penalty. Scratch the pass from your record. And the Polar Bears will replay third down and just have 10 more yards to go. And there is the handoff to Hours. No, it's a reverse. And the ball comes back to Hours on a screen to the far side. And he catches it and goes out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. Little trick play there, but it didn't go anywhere. Yeah, sometimes when you're on the trick play, you have to have uh, a little bit of time at the end for the quarterback to set their feet. And he didn't have that. Um, so it was one where he had to get rid of it a little quicker than he wanted to. So fourth down coming up for Fairmont. And a punting situation. Bears coming in to have hours coming in to punt, or at least he's lining up to punt with Dylan. You never really know. Line of scrimmage is the 38-yard line. Good snap. And hours is, in fact, punting it, angling it to the far side. It hits and rolls into the end zone for the touchback. So that's not what the Polar Bears wanted to do there. Just really an 18-yard net change in possession, and the Indians get it at the 20 with three minutes to go in the first quarter. So penalties have certainly hurt the Polar Bears, called back a touchdown in the first possession and really spoiled a golden opportunity for the Polar Bears on that last possession. First and 10, Bridgeport at its own 20. And there's movement at the line of scrimmage, the Indians in motion, and that play's coming back. Illegal shift is the call against Bridgeport. So the Indians get their first penalty of the night. And that's going to make it first down and 15 and take the ball back to the 15-yard line. The Indians have it in the center of the field, wearing the all-black uniforms tonight, sparking some controversy here in Bridgeport. First time they've ever worn a color other than red or white. Single wing formation, snap comes to Rorick. Rorick is really hit by Boda at the line of scrimmage, and he gets nothing. Great job by Boda, but uh, Bigelow did a really good job of, of, of occupying the blocker and squeezing down uh, uh, the block like he's supposed to, and uh, pretty well played all the way around. Second down, give him a yard, make it second and 14 for the Indians now. And this is the down and distance we need to keep them in so that they are uncomfortable and that they, uh, they do not like to be in this, this down and distance. Josh Love alongside Zach Roarig on this second and 14. Love gets the snap. He's running wide to the right side. Gets a hole. Gets out of the 20. The 25 breaks the tackle at the 30 and takes it up to the 40-yard line. Josh Love, big run. Gavin Michael makes the tackle, but not soon enough, as it's a big run, 24 yards for, for uh, Josh Love. Yeah, they just come with a power play on that play, and uh, we, we just have to make sure that we stay consistent with how we play. We played it the way that we were supposed to play before. we got to keep doing that. Ball comes up to the Bridgeport 40. First down and 10. Snap to Rorick. Rorick off the right side. Has running room down the sidelines and Cannon Dinger runs him out inside the 50 at about the 43 yard line and that's where the Indians will have it first down and 10. Yeah, that's typical Bridgeport. When they find a play that works, they're going to stay with it and they're going to stay with it until you stop it. So we have to find a way to stop that power play. Five first downs. Rorick has gained 62 yards tonight on six carries. It's first and 10 Bridgeport with a minute 38 to go here in the first quarter. Fairmont seven, Bridgeport seven. From the 42. 
Snap to Love. Counter to half away. He's upended by the Polar Bears. Brassero for a loss on the play back at the 44-yard line. Two-yard loss. Yeah, great job by Brassero getting, uh, getting the penetration on that play, knifing in there and making a nice play. The snap comes back to Rorig, and the wing back cuts in front of him from right to left. Rorig hands him the ball going against the flow, but that time Bracero was right there to bring him down. Second and 12 for Bridgeport from its own 44, or from the Polar Bear 44 yard line. Snap comes to Rorick, sweeping to the left side. He is hit by Michael and dragged down after a gain of about a yard. Nice defensive play by Gavin Michael. Yeah, they just come with a perimeter play to our left. Uh, uh, excuse me, defensive right, and uh, great job by our perimeter players uh, coming up with Michael uh, uh, coming up to lead the charge on that play. Back to the original line of scrimmage. It's third down and 10 now at the Polar Bear 42. 30 seconds left in the first quarter, game tied. Long count at the line of scrimmage. Play clock down to 10. Snap to Rorick, he keeps the football off the right side and there he goes inside the 30, the 25, the 20 and Dinger brings him down at the 19 yard line. Yeah, you can't fall asleep, uh, you know, they'll run the power play on the edge but then they'll come back with a quick trap up the middle and that's what they did on that play. So the ball down at the 18 yard line and that will be the final play of the first quarter. We played one quarter from Wayne Jamison Field in Bridgeport. It's the Fairmont Polar Bears 7, the Bridgeport Indians 7 on Fun 93-1. One minute. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Since 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. One quarter in the books, the Polar Bears and the Bridgeport Indians are tied at seven, but Bridgeport threatening at the Fairmont 18 as we start the second quarter. It's first down and 10. Rory and Love, the running backs, half away the wing back. That's really all you need to know. Rory gets the snap wide to the left, and he cuts inside and gets some yardage as he takes it out of bounds on the far side of the field inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, per pretty well blocked by Bridgeport on, on, uh, on that play. They, uh, they come with the uh, perimeter play and, uh, and get a pretty positive game. And there's a flag down on the play on the far side of the field. Holding is called against Bridgeport, but it's going to come from the end of the run almost. So it's going to bring the ball back to about the 13-yard line. So Rory gets 15 yards, puts him over 100 yards rushing, and then the 10-yard penalty takes the ball back. Now to the 23. And it'll be first down and about 15 yards to go for the Indians. There is the snap to Rorick. Rorick wide to the right side. Cuts inside, runs into Gavin Michael, and he is going down at about the 15-yard line. Not 
16-yard line. It'll be a gain of about seven yards on the play. And it's going to be second down. And about nine yards to go. Can't fall asleep here. We have to be ready for, uh, for the counter. Uh, we have to stay at home when flow goes away from us. Second down nine from the Fairmont 16. Snap to Rorig. Rorig off the right side. There's an opening inside the 15, down to the 10, and close to the five-yard line before Canfield brings him down. Yeah, Canfield was pretty close to stripping that ball uh, on that play. He, uh, he had his hand on the ball. I thought he almost had it. Ball comes down to the six. And another Bridgeport first down, and it's first down and goal from the six-yard line. Game tied 7-7 here in Bridgeport. Good crowd on hand, as you would expect. Visiting section across from us, almost full of polar bear fans. First and goal, six-yard line. High snap, Love gets it, hurtles over a tackler and is going to be hit inside the five and driven backwards. Got to mark him down just inside the three, so give him a gain of three yards on that carry. A pretty good job by the inside of our defense, uh, staying pretty stout on the, on the goal line there. Gavin Michael has been busy in the first half. He's been in on a number of Fairmont senior tackles. Three, second goal for the Indians. Second down, goal to go. The ball on the three-yard line. Bears dig in defensively. Snap to Love, counter to Hathaway. Hathaway gets it in off the left side for the Bridgeport touchdown. Yeah, they come with the reverse or the uh, the counter play uh, that I was just talking about. We have to have to be ready for that. Hathaway scores his second touchdown of the night. And the Indians are ready to attempt the extra point. Good snap. Pick up. Pick good. Time out on the field. 9.42 to go. Second quarter. Bridgeport 14. Fairmont 7 on Fun 93-1. National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. The Bridgeport Indians have retaken the lead now early in the second quarter, 14-7. Bridgeport led 7-0 after a long drive, and then the Polar Bears came back in two plays and tied it. And now Bridgeport, in a drive that started in the first quarter, finishes it in the second, and now has the one touchdown lead. Rorick will be kicking off for Bridgeport from left to right in the center of the field. Line drive kick, and Hours will catch it on a scoop at the 15. He comes to the 20, he is hit as he takes it over the 20 yard line to the 25 and is going to be brought down close to the 30. Donovan Williams in on the tackle for Bridgeport. And it's going to be first down and 10 Fairmont at its own 30. This is a time where the polar bear offense needs to generate something. It's been a disappointing offensive possession the last time as Fairmont had the ball in Bridgeport territory after a turnover but couldn't take advantage. Snap comes back to Whitehair. Sends the ball downfield long and the pass is incomplete along the sidelines. It was caught by Jones but the official said he was out of bounds. And it's going to make it second down and 10. 
Yeah, we take a shot on first down, uh, pretty well defended by Bridgeport uh, and pretty well protected by our offensive line. Uh, they just, they, the boundary became the defender's friend. And it was pretty well caught, too, by Jones in traffic, but he just ran out of room. So here we go. Second and 10, Fairmont shifting receivers to the right, three to the right, two to the left. Backfield is empty. White hair is back to pass. Little screen pass coming to Hours. He catches it at the 20, gets to the 25, breaks free, gets up close to the 40-yard line. Yeah, I like the call there, Jeff. Uh, anytime you have a hard-charging uh, defensive line like we do right now with Bridgeport, uh, screen some the screen game can slow them down a little bit, and so hopefully that'll that'll help and uh, work in our favor. That's the pass play the Polar Bears ran for the touchdown on their first possession, but it was called back because of a holding penalty. Third down and a yard to go for the Polar Bears at their own 39-yard line. Empty backfield set for White here now. Back to pass. Sends the ball downfield for Dinger. He's got it. What a beautiful catch by Cannon Dinger. Fully extended. And the Polar Bears have it at the 31-yard line. And Fairmont has a player shaken up. It's quarterback Brody White here. He is now up and walking off the field. Hit after he delivered the pass. Obviously, I didn't see it. Uh, he he stood in there real tough, Jeff, and uh, and, and, and took a shot. Um, what toughness. He stood in there and delivered it. 30-yard completion. And a polar bear first down. Ball is at the 31. So that brings Dylan Hours into run at quarterback for the Polar Bears now. First down and 10 from the 31. Hours takes the snap. He's running wide to the right side, inside the 30, and goes out of bounds on the far side of the field at about the 26-yard line. He'll get about five yards on the play. Great job by ours, and uh, you know that time we got a little extra number with him carrying the ball from the quarterback position. Uh, good to see Brody back in the game. Whitehair returns. Brody's completed seven of 12 passes for 117 yards tonight, and it's second down and five for the Polar Bears. Clock stopped with 8:25 to go in the second quarter. Bridgeport 14, Fairmont seven. Second and five, Hours gets the handoff. Running wide to the left side, he's in big trouble. And he's going to be dropped behind the line of scrimmage back at about the 30. He'll lose four on the play. Yeah, we'll bring an extra back in the game to try to get an extra number as a blocker. Uh, but we, we've got to be firm at the point of contact. We're just giving up way too much penetration in the run game. So third down for Fairmont. Third down and nine from the Indians' 30-yard line. Dinger and Michael are wide outs to the left. Two receivers to the right. Hours behind, quarterback White here. Third down and nine. Fake to Hours. White here to pass. Downfield for Navon Jones. It's intercepted at the goal line. Take it out over the five, up to the 10. By Martin, gets to the 20. Hit from behind and dropped at about the 33-yard line in Bridgeport territory. And a flag is thrown on the play, and we might have a roughing the passer call against Bridgeport. Polar Bear players are all signaling that the penalty is against the Indians, and it is personal foul, roughing the passer, and the Polar Bears will get a first down. Brady took a shot that play. Yeah, that, that was that was a shot. Well, now Indians fans know what it's like to get a big penalty against you. The Polar Bears had a touchdown called back in the first quarter, and now the Indians have an interception called back. 
and the Polar Bears will get a first down as the official marks off the penalty and sets the ball down at about the 16-yard line. And it'll be first and 10 for Fairmont from there. Clock stop, 7.26 to go until halftime. And the Polar Bears trail 14-7, but have renewed life now. First and 10 from the Indians, 16. Here is Whitehair, pressure coming, slant downfield, pass is caught, hits a polar bear touchdown. Navon Jones catches the pass in the end zone. It's a 16-yard TD pass, and the polar bears trail 14 to 13. Tell you what, Jeff, Brody Whitehair just showed me a lot right there. That kid just got up, took a shot, and he stood back in there and got right back in there and fired that ball. Nice job. That kid wants to win. So Navon Jones catches his second TD pass, and Cam Pesha will attempt the extra point. Ball down, the kick is up, the kick is good. Timeout on the field, 6.56 to go in the second quarter. Fairmont 14, Bridgeport 14 on Fun 93-1. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Fairmont Senior answers again as Bridgeport had taken a 14-7 lead. The Polar Bears have now tied it at 14. Games around the state tonight. North Marion has a big game at home against the AAA Brook Bruins. The Huskies with an early 6-0 lead. Polar Bears ready to kick off now. It'll be Dinger kicking. North Marion's game with Brooke is now 14-3 Huskies. Dinger tees it up in the center of the field at the 40-yard line. And here is his kick. High end over end, but short. Taken at the 24-yard line up to the 30, and that is all. That is Alex Moses on the kickoff return. Logan Canfield on the tackle for the Polar Bears. At the 30. Yeah, great coverage again by that kick, that, that kick coverage team. Been there all year. 31-yard line, and that's where Bridgeport goes, first down and 10. In a tie game, the Indians kicked off to start the game, so Bridgeport will get the football to start the second half. 6.52 on the clock. Bridgeport comes to the line of scrimmage. The ball is in the center of the field as Bridgeport moves now from left to right. Polar Bears crowd the line of scrimmage, and there is the hand or the snap rather to Rorig, takes it off the right side and gets up to about the 33-yard line, gain of about two. Excellent. Now, oh, sorry. Now they set it down at the 32, so make it a gain of one yard. Yeah, I was just going to say, Jeff, excellent job by Bigelow. That's exactly how you want to play that. Uh, his, his the offensive lineman he was lined up on uh, released inside to the linebacker. He jammed it down and had nowhere. The back had nowhere to go. That's how you play that. Nice job. Second down nine, the ball at the 32. Bridgeport needs to take it to its own 41 for a first down. Fairmont digs in defensively as the Indians look at a second and long now. Josh Love gives it to Hathaway. Pitch back to Rorig off the right side, and he runs out of bounds just shy of the 40 at the 39. It'll be third down and two for Bridgeport. Come with a little dive option that time, and uh, we, you know, that that becomes assignment football. So when they start to go to the perimeter, we just have to come up and make a play individually. It's it's uh, it becomes assignment football. Third down, two yards to go on the Bridgeport side of the 40 at the 39. Indians haven't had a bad snap so far tonight. 
It's Love and Rorick to get the snap, and Rorick gets it off the left side. He gets the first down as he dives out over the 40 to about the 43-yard line. Dylan Auer is in on the tackle for the Polar Bears. But it'll be a first down for Bridgeport on a four-yard gain for Rorick. Rorick is over 100 yards here in the first half at 120. Game clock down to 5.45. First down and 10. And there is the keeper by Love. Takes it up to the 50. Brought down there by Canfield. But he'll get about six, seven yards on the play. There is a flag thrown on the field, though. And they just come on the inside trap. Flag at the line of scrimmage. Holding is called against Bridgeport. So that's going to make it first down and 20. You'll erase that play from your book. And it's going to make it first and long. First and 20 yards to go back at the 33-yard line. They need to get into polar bear territory at the 47 for a first down. And the game clock turns inside 5.20 to go in the first half. We have to find a way to win here on first down, keep them in this down, down in distance. Game tied, 14-14. Snap. Goes to Rorig. Rorig takes it out over the 35 up to the 36 and goes down there. He'll get three yards on the play, and it's going to be second down and about 17. Gavin Michael again in on the tackle. Pretty good job by Bigelow again, squeezing it down, playing. And that's not something that's going to show up in the stat sheet, but that, that, that's what helps somebody else make a, play, make a play when you squeeze down a trap like that, and that's, that's how you play that. Second down, 17. Big play for the Polar Bears here. We'd like to keep them at third and double digits. And timeout called by Tyler Ferris and Bridgeport. Timeout on the field with 4.29 left in the second quarter. It's Fairmont 14, Bridgeport 14 on Fun 93-1. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmered chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. Big stretch of play for both teams as we are winding down the second quarter. Bridgeport and Fairmont tied at 14. The Indians have the ball in their own territory at the 36. Looking at a second down and 17. This is a team that has thrown six passes in, four in its fourth game. Leading up to this in the first three, they have not thrown a pass tonight and they haven't completed one all season. Rory gets the handoff. And Roy takes it inside the 40 to the 39 or to the 41. So it's going to be third down coming up and about 12 yards to go. Yeah, this is not the down and distance they want to be, but uh, you know, probably in four down territory here. So uh, we have to be ready for anything here. Game clock has turned inside four minutes. Third and long. Polar Bears desperately would like to get a stop and get the ball back. Here come the Indians now. Rorick gets the snap wide to the left side, cuts it back. He gets out over the 45, the 50, dives inside the 50. He'll be short of the first down by about a yard. An 11-yard gain and a fourth down for Bridgeport and about a yard and a half to go. Game clock down to 320. Bridgeport has just one timeout left, so 
if the Indians are thinking about scoring, they have to be concerned about having enough time, but they also have to be concerned about getting this first down. Fourth down and a long one. The football mark at the 49-yard line. Snap comes to Love. Love gets the first down as he dives inside the 50 down to the 45. He'll get four yards and a Bridgeport first down. First down for Bridgeport. The clock should begin to turn, but it hasn't yet on that first down. I guess this is home field advantage. Now the officials calling time because they hadn't started the clock. I'm sure it was just a coincidence. First down and 10 coming up for Bridgeport now at the 45. And there is a handoff up the middle to Rorig, and Rorig spins his way down inside the 45 to the 41-yard line. He'll get four. It'll be second down and six. He can't fall asleep here. Uh, you know, we said they have not attempted a lot of passes, but uh, this is something, a uh, time where you, you might expect to see one here. Clock down inside 220. The ball at the Fairmont 41. Game tied at 14. We're nearing the end of the first half. Second down and six for the Indians. Snap to Love. Love off the right side. Big hole. Carries the football inside the 30 and down to the 26-yard line. It'll be a Bridgeport first down. Mark it at the 25. It'll be a 16-yard game. Yeah, they just come with the power play that they've ran for years. It's just the simple you know, block down and kick out. Um, we just got to have do a little better job at the point, holding the point, uh, defending that. Bridgeport does not have a great field goal game this season. So they would be hesitant, unless they have to, of trying one. Ball at the 25, first and 10. A minute 38 on the clock in the second quarter. There is... The counter play to Hathaway, and Hathaway takes it inside the 25 down to the 23. Arbogast wraps him up and brings him down for a short gain of about two yards. Yeah, pretty well defended uh, that time. Arbogast got the penetration, and uh, he had no place to go. Game clock down to a minute 12. Second down, eight Indians. The ball at the Fairmont 23-yard line. Game tied 14-14. We're now inside one minute to go in the first half. Love and Rorig in the run in the backfield. And here is Rorig back to pass. Off balance downfield. It's intercepted. Polar Bears have it at the 16. Downfield with it is ours, and he takes it along the sidelines, but steps out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. Big play. Big play by ours. And the Polar Bears have the football on the pass interception by Dylan Hours. Ball at the 35-yard line. And Jeff, 43 seconds here. Uh, this two-minute offense is something we work on all the time in practice. It's something that uh, they, they work and give them the, these situations. So 43 seconds is plenty of time. One of the officials is having a long conversation with the referee. Looks as though they've called a personal foul against Fairmont Senior. Something happening apparently along the sidelines, but you couldn't really tell. The official first signaled the penalty on Bridgeport, then changed it to Fairmont. So it comes back to the 18-yard line. The interception took it up to the 33. Personal foul against Fairmont with 43 seconds to go. We're in the second quarter, and Fairmont Senior has the football. See what Fairmont decides to do. Now there's a timeout at the line of scrimmage. Timeout Fairmont Senior. Timeout Polar Bears, 43 seconds left in the first half. It's Fairmont 14, Bridgeport 14 on Fun 93-1. 
Happy National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches. Better with Pepsi. Here's the situation. We're nearing the end of the first half, and a tie came. The Polar Bears have the football, but it's at Fairmont's 18-yard line. First and 10. Bridgeport has one timeout left. The Polar Bears have two. White hair in the shotgun. Bracero uh, blocking back in the game now, and Brody back to pass. Now runs out of the pocket, running upfield, and he slides down out over the 20 up to the 24-yard line, so he'll get six yards on the play. Yeah, good decision by Brody. You don't want to force anything here, uh, any bad throw that you don't need to do. Second down and four. Game clock turning inside 25. Fairmont not in a big hurry. Polar Bears have one timeout left. <clears throat> they may just try to heave one downfield and see if they can get something good to happen because this will most likely be the final play. White here in the shotgun, down to five seconds. Back, pass comes over the head of Canfield, so no, it's not the final play. We have four tenths of a second left. Brody has completed eight of 14 passes tonight for 133 yards, two touchdowns. He averages about 260 yards in his first two games against the Indians as a freshman and a sophomore. Third down coming up for the Polar Bears. Four tenths of a second left. The ball at the Fairmont 24 yard line. And now Whitehair calls timeout. The play clock was running down, and he had to call the timeout. Four-tenths of a second to go, first half. The score, Fairmont 14, Bridgeport 14 on Fun 93-1. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Just about the end of the first half, but we have one play left. As the Polar Bears are looking at a third down and four from their own 24-yard line. Bridgeport in the prevent defense now. Yeah, just want to be smart here. Uh, just protect the football. Fairmont sends four wide outs to the right. There's the little screen to the far side. Hours catches it. He gets to the 20, the 25, the 30, up close to the 40-yard line and is run out of bounds right at the 40. And that will be the end of the first half. We play two quarters here at Wayne Jamison Field in Bridgeport, and we've got a tie. The score at the half, Fairmont Senior 14, Bridgeport 14, and the halftime report coming up next on Fun 93-1. General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. That's nearly 50 years of providing those essential needs for your daily journey. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. We know these last couple years haven't been easy, but with every sunrise and sunset, you keep us going. To the LG family, the moms, dads, sisters, brothers, sons, and daughters of West Virginia, thank you. 
City National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Here at the Cracker Barrel, home-style food and great value go hand-in-hand with favorites like slow-simmered chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel. Take care now. Sandwiches. Better with Pepsi. <sighs> you have a goal. You know what you want. Start with us. New River Community and Technical College, your community college. Take classes online or in a classroom in Beaver, Lewisburg, Summersville, or Princeton. Or step outside the classroom in one of our technical or health programs. Find flexible and affordable options to help you reach your goal. It's closer than you think when you start with us. New River Community and Technical College. Apply today. It's halftime at Wayne Jamison Field in Bridgeport. And, Ray, we have one team that can't run. We have one team that can't pass. And both teams have the same number of points because each of those teams does the other aspect really, really well. Yeah, it's contrast and styles. It's kind of like if you could merge them together, we'd have, uh, you know, we'd have the... the the prototypical offense, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's just one of those things. And we kind of we said in the beginning that uh, Bridgeport was uh, the strength of their defense was was being able to stop the run, and, and they were going to commit as few resources to the uh, run game as they could, and that's what they've done. That you know you kind of see they're they're keeping pretty much five in the box, and uh, and you got to give them credit there. They're doing a good job thus far, but uh, uh, I, I I credit uh, you know Brady Whitehair uh, his toughness. Uh, he showed me a lot coming back the way he did and stepping it hanging in there and then you know he took the big hit and then he came right back and, and delivered a strike and uh, so uh, hats off to him. That's one of the things that uh, I think unless you've actually been there you don't know what it's like to be a quarterback <laughs> and even if you have an, a receiver who's wide open you've got some 270 pound lineman coming right at you it's got to have an effect on you but he's been able to withstand that and play very well. And the one play you're talking about was the touchdown pass to Navon Jones. He had to wait long enough for Jones to get open, and that left him in peril, but he completed yeah. the pass, and then the Polar Bears were able to tie the game. Yeah, I mean, Jeff, I'm a, I've always been an offensive lineman by trade, but I'll, I'll tell you there's a reason why those uh, quarterbacks get paid a lot in the NFL is because those guys, when they take those shots, they take those shots. I mean, they, you know, and that's what Brady was doing. I mean, he, he stood in that pocket. He knew he was going to take the shot, and he, but he kept his eyes down. That's what's impressing me so much about him right now is he's, his ability to keep his eyes downfield on the target while everything's closing in on him, and uh, and, and that's something that not a lot of not a lot of quarterbacks are able to do. But he's showing a lot of toughness. And remember, he was hit on a pass and was laid out on the field for 30 seconds or so. Had to come out for one play. Dylan Hours came in ran a play at quarterback, and then just like that, Brody comes right back into the game for the Polar Bears. So he did experience a hard hit, and then had a roughing the passer penalty called on him after he came in after absorbing that original hard hit. So like you say, it hasn't been an easy job for him so far tonight in the pocket. No, and we've, we've got to do a better job in the run game to help him out. Uh, you know, it's really hard when you become one-dimensional um, as we've pretty much been this first half. So I know one of the things in the in the locker room right now, they're trying to scheme some ways to, to come up with some better, uh, you know, run concepts and, and, and something to address the run 
running game up because they've got to find some way to, to do that because if not, they're going to keep teeing off. And uh, we've got to find some ways to slow. You saw the screen the one time to ours, uh, you know, to try to slow down the pass rush. We've got to find a way to slow that pass rush down. The best way to do that is to get some semblance of a running game. It was a tight game last year at the stadium in Fairmont. The Polar Bears lost 24-21, a field goal with three minutes left in the game. Gave Bridgeport the win. But it was a game last year where the Polar Bears were able to run the ball just enough. They didn't get a lot of yardage, but they had enough positive plays that it made the Indians play a little more honestly defensively. Yeah, it does. And and, and that's, and that's you know, like one, the one possession in particular, uh, you know, I think on first down we got three yards. And I know, you know, to most people three yards might not seem like a lot, and it's, it's really not. But it's a positive gain. It gets you to a manageable second and seven. Those are the types of things we need to do in this second half. It's not saying we have to run for 150 yards this half, but we need to find some way to get some positive yardage. Um, you know, and 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 they've they've got to come up with a way to scheme to do that because you know up front they're they're very good. I mean, Bridgeport's a very physical uh, defensive front. The Polar Bears had a golden opportunity. I'm sure this is the one series they're probably kicking themselves for because the Bridgeport fumble on the kickoff. Gave Fairmont the ball at the Indians 34 yard line and Fairmont was not impressive at all on that particular possession. They couldn't get any yardage and that would have been such a big momentum booster to be able to get the ball in the end zone and take the lead there. Yeah, and, and that's that's something right now I think that's really, I think is a real positive for us in this first half is that we're not making the big mistakes. We're really protecting the football overall pretty well. Uh, you know, of course, they had the turnover with the, uh, the kickoff and then also the interception. So uh, those are things that if we continue to do that, that's going to continue to give us opportunities. And we need to create more turnovers. Uh, but when we get them in situations, it doesn't happen every drive, but when we do get them in a third and long, we have to capitalize. Uh, you know, it might be that we have to take some chances on some blitzes to, to keep them and, and, and take some chances, and Coach Barton might have to do that this half. But uh, we have to make sure that we, you know, we take advantage when we get them behind the chains and, and they're in a situation that makes them uncomfortable. Bridgeport didn't attempt a single pass last week in the game against John Marshall. Coming into the game tonight, the Indians had thrown just six passes, and they had one intercepted, but they hadn't completed a pass yet. Tonight, they attempted just one pass. It was intercepted, so Bridgeport's total passing so far this season, 0 for 7, two interceptions, and that's not necessarily bothering them in this game, but that's an area where you think Bridgeport would need to perhaps become a little more uh, dangerous. Yeah, and, and they've had, you know, I mean, of course, every year's different. I mean, they've had some times where they've, they've thrown the ball a little more. I mean, obviously seven times in, in what, four games or, or three and a half or however many games it's been. Uh, that, that's not a lot, but, uh, you know, when they do throw the ball, obviously they're looking for a big play, uh, and uh, so credit to us on that, on that uh, pass attempt. We, we came up with a big play and big interception in that moment. It was Dylan Hours who had that interception along the sidelines, and it's unfortunate that he was so close to the sidelines because he actually stepped on the sidelines on the return, and then after the play, there was a personal foul called against the Polar Bears, and Fairmont just pretty much ran out the clock after that at the end of the first half, going into the locker room with a 14-14 time. When we come back, it's going to be uh, time to check in with Ray Frazier for all the inside information on I think there's a football game in Morgantown tomorrow night, uh, the maybe Pitt-West Virginia game. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that when we come back. Here at the half, Wayne Jamison Field is the site, and the game is Bridgeport, Fairmont Senior, and the score is tied at 14. The halftime report continues on Fun 93-1. Do your thing. Okay.
thank the members of the Bridgeport Film School 8th grade marching band for joining us tonight. We're under the direction of Mr. Chris Weasley. The band will be in action again tomorrow at the Oil and Gas Festival in Sisterville, West Virginia. They will be competing in the parade and field show competition. And on September 23rd, the band will be playing the Liberty High School Band Spectacular in Park The show begins at 5 p.m. We hope to see you at future band events. And go band! It's at the half here at Wayne Jamison Field, and we're tied 14-14. Polar Bears and the Bridgeport Indians. Fairmont comes in ranked number four in Class AA in the first official SSAC ratings, and Bridgeport at number nine in Class AAA. The Indians two and one. The Polar Bears are three and zero. Oh. Okay, let's talk now about the Mountaineers. Big game coming up uh, tomorrow night. Pitt in town. Tell me what you know about the Panthers and what kind of a threat will they pose to the Mountaineers tomorrow? Well, I mean, the very, uh, very solid football team, uh, you know, it's going to be a tremendous challenge, uh, you know, offensively, the, I look for them to really try to establish and run, uh, you know, that's something that, uh, I think that they've always, you know, kind of prided themselves on, and uh, I think last week they got against Cincinnati, they got a little, a little ways away from that. So I, I think they're going to try to stab some runs. So we got to be ready for that. But uh, they like to take their shots downfield, uh, you know. So we we have to be ready for that defensively. Uh, you know, I think they're going to try to bring pressure, but uh, you know, they've always, uh, you know, prided themselves on stopping the run. So uh, you know, that's something that uh, we're, we're going to have to be ready for, and it's going to be strength against strength. It's going to be their front against our front. Lackluster first quarter for the Mountaineers last week. Fortunate for WVU, I think, that the lightning delay came because it was like lightning struck the team because after the delay, this was a totally different football team out there. What was going on there that created such a, a malaise for that Mountaineer team? I, I think initially, uh, you know, you got to credit Duquesne, but I, I, I think, uh, especially early on, I, th I think they were uh, they were committing a lot of people to the box. They were getting a lot of people in the box, and so um, you know that was that was creating a little bit of issue with us. And, and so you kind of expected that they were going to take some chances, and they were taking some chances defensively. But um, you know, I really credit our guys for coming out, uh, you know, after the delay and, and coming out uh, ready to play. And I mean, they they took care of business when they needed to, and so uh, we're moving on to next week. When for this look, week now. <laughs> yeah, we're tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're right here. When you, uh, when you look at Pitt and you look at Zach up front, what's he going to be going up against? Oh, very good, very good front. Um, you know, last year, I mean, you look at all three levels of their defense, they had somebody drafted and, uh, you know, I, you know, they're going to have a very talented front, uh, you know, front seven and, you know, back ends talented. I mean, they're all they're all uh, really good players. So uh, we're going to play real physical. And, uh, you know, he's he's all those guys uh, facing the defensive front. It, it, it's going to be a big challenge because they're all physical. Uh, so we're going to have to match that physicality tomorrow. After a first uh, couple of drops by a couple of receivers in the first half for WVU, um, Hudson Clement comes yeah. off the uh, sidelines and he comes yeah. in and makes a name for himself yeah. in just uh, about uh, two and a half quarters of football. Yeah, and I, and I think uh, you know a lot of a lot of Mountaineer fans are probably uh, you know didn't know uh, much about him, but uh, I think those guys that are in that building uh, knew a lot about him. Uh, you know the, how hard he works, and you kind of heard uh, you know all his teammates talking about it and the coaches. But uh, you know he obviously very talented, and it can be happier for him. I mean that's uh, that's another in-state guy that uh, has has earned a scholarship and uh, just tremendous. Uh, and uh, it's my understanding he's going to start tomorrow. So that's, uh, you know, kudos to him. That's, that's awesome. Highly touted receiver out of Martinsburg. So it's not as though this is a kid that came out of nowhere. He came out of a high-powered yeah. pro program, was yeah. the state player of the year. So it's not like people didn't know about him on the high school level. 
But then after kids graduate, I think you kind of uh, go into oblivion until you seem to locate yourself somewhere, and, and he did. Yeah. And and first catch, it was like, oh, okay. Yeah. It was nice that he made a catch. But then he kept catching the ball, and the way the receiver started, that gave him a, a, a real good chance to play. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think, you know, the other thing you look at him, um, you know, he's a second-year player, uh, so he's he's had an opportunity to be in the strength conditioning coach with uh, one of my former teammates uh, at Fairmont State, uh, Mike Joseph, who's excellent and, uh, you know, obviously has him ready to play, and uh, he's totally, you know, he's changed his body and he's, he's gotten physically ready to play. And uh, and that's, that's such a big thing, the strength conditioning program. Uh, you know, when you go from year one to year two, you make a big jump, and, and he did, and uh, he's, he's worked, you know, you can tell he's worked his tail off. I mean, he, obviously the talent's always been there, but uh, but now he's physically ready to play, and, and that's and that's showing on the field in his performance. Okay, now here's some inside information I want, <laughs> and this, you can reveal this. As getting ready for this game tomorrow, is there a different feel? Um, I mean, obviously a different feel from playing Duquesne because you know, you're playing a quality program, certainly a, a, a notch up from the Duquesne level. But playing Pitt, does that create a different feeling on the player side, you think? Yeah, it does. I mean, uh, you know, if, if, if they don't say it does, it, it, the, I think that they're, they're not acknowledging the rivalry and, uh, you know, the, both sides. But the thing is, I, I think in a game like this, uh, you know, you have to, to make sure you stay in control of your emotions. You can't. Uh, I think I heard Coach Scott talking about it this week. You know, you don't want the guys not to be amped up because they, they acknowledge the rivalry, but play under control. And uh, and, I, and I think our guys will do a really good job of that tomorrow. They're going to feed off the crowd, and uh, it's going to be a tremendous environment tomorrow. I hope our, our crowd's loud, and, and uh, you know, I think uh, – I think they'll be ready by 7.30, and uh, so I'm really excited about the environment tomorrow. It'll, it's going to be exciting. And to the crowd, don't get so discouraged when one thing goes wrong right. because last right. game people were already – giving up on the entire season after the first quarter. And then the way the game ends, everybody's like, wow, that was quite a performance. So you got to give yeah. the team just a little bit of patience. Yeah, and, and I know it's, it's – it, it, I mean, you know, as a fan, you, you know, you want uh, – I think every play to be a touchdown, and uh, you know it just it, unfortunately it doesn't work that way. But uh, you know I, I just really hope our, our fans stay behind our, our, our team and and, and uh, you know our young men the, the whole time, and uh, you know stay with them for four quarters. And uh, and I think if they do, I, I, I think we're going to be just fine. Uh, I, I can't be more excited. And uh, you know it's just this is a great weekend uh, with this game tonight, and then. Tomorrow, obviously, it can't get any better. So. No, it, it can't. Polar Bears in Bridgeport, and tomorrow, Pitt and West Virginia. When we come back, we'll check the stats. We'll check games around the state as halftime continues with the score. Fairmont 14, Bridgeport 14 on Fun 93-1. General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. That's nearly 50 years of providing those essential needs for your daily journey. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. We know these last couple years haven't been easy, but with every sunrise and sunset, you keep us going. To the LG family, the moms, dads, sisters, brothers, sons, and daughters of West Virginia, thank you. City National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand. With favorites like slow simmered chicken and dumplings, starting at $7.99. Or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel. Take care now. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. You have a goal. You know what you want. 
Start with us, New River Community and Technical College, your community college. Take classes online or in a classroom in Beaver, Lewisburg, Summersville, or Princeton, or step outside the classroom in one of our technical or health programs. Find flexible and affordable options to help you reach your goal. It's closer than you think when you start with us. New River Community and Technical College. Apply today. Against the polar bears for 40 yards. Four against the Indians for 40 yards. Turnovers, Bridgeport fumbled once, lost it, and also tossed an interception. The Polar Bears did not turn the ball over. Touchdown scorers, it's been Navon Jones for the Polar Bears. He caught a 64-yard touchdown pass and a 16-yard TD pass in both the first and second quarters. And for Bridgeport, Tanner Hathaway from that wingback spot scored two touchdowns and that's where we stand, tied at 14 at the half. Let's take a look at games around the state. We'll start in Class AA, where North Marion has a big game at home tonight against AAA Brook, and the Huskies having a good night, leading 20-3 to late in the second quarter there. Phillip Barber and Liberty are playing in the second quarter. That game knotted up at 14. Frankfurt, ranked number two in Class AA, is tied up with Weir at the half, 21-21. Roan County on top of Lewis, 14-0 in the second quarter. Roan comes in at number four this week. Point Pleasant trailing Scott, 27-0 in the second quarter. Scott, number six. Bluefield and Woodrow Wilson are playing tomorrow. Winfield at the half leading Wayne, 20-8. Nitro at the half trailing Chapmanville, 22-20. In the second quarter, East Fairmont 44, Braxton nothing. Halftime, Herbert Hoover 28, Hedgesville 8. Kaiser 38, Berkeley Springs nothing at the half. Buchanan Upshur blanking Elkins 14 nothing at halftime. And Independence at the half on top of Shady Spring 35 to nothing. And those are our double A scores. Now let's take a look at triple A. Huntington is leading George Washington 21 to 7. Parkersburg South leading Parkersburg 21-13 in the second quarter. Cabell Midland on top of South Charleston 28 to nothing, second quarter. Spring Mills leading Musselman at the half 14 to 3. Martinsburg beating a team out of DC 20 to 12 in the second quarter. And Spring Valley leading Hurricane 28 to 3 in the second quarter. Spring Valley 0 and 3, Hurricane 2 and 1. Capital 14, St. Albans 6 in the second quarter. And RCB and Preston, we have no score in that game from Kingwood. So that's what's going on around the state. Coming up this week, don't forget, Tuesday night we have the Parmar Coaches Show, that's at the Mason Jar on Pennsylvania Avenue in Fairmont. We have three of those under our belts now, so it's like we've got this all figured out for the Coaches Show. But join us at 6 to 7. You can come on out, be there live, and if you can't be there live, you can listen to it live from the Mason Jar. That's Tuesday, and then next week, the Polar Bears will be playing on the road at University. Schedule note here, University starts its games at 7.30, so we'll be on the air a half hour later. So that means game time, air time will be 7.10, kickoff 7.30 from University High School, the Polar Bears and the AAA University Hawks who are playing Wheeling Park, losing 7-0 at halftime. Fairmont Senior is going to kick off to start the second half in this tie game and they'll kick from right to left Josh Love goes back deep along with Zach Rorick Cannon Dinger is going to kick for the Polar Bears. Oh. 
He approaches the ball, and he kicks it downfield, end over end, short. It is going to be caught at the 15-yard line by Rorick. He's hit at the 20, gets out over the 25, the 30, and up to the 32-yard line. Hit and brought down there. And it'll be first down and 10 for the Indians at the 31. So Bridgeport comes to the line of scrimmage. It's the 31 yard line in Bridgeport territory. The Indians in the all black uniforms, first time ever for this game tonight. Wing back half away to the right. And uh, the snap comes to Love. Right up the middle with a lot of room. Out over the 40, the 50, into Polar Bear territory at the 40. Breaks free at the 35. Goes down to the 20 and is hit to the sidelines at about the 30-yard line. Not the 20, at the 30. And it's a big game for the Indians from the 31 down to the 29. Yeah, Jeff, they were in the inside trap. Uh, catch is going up the field a little bit too far. A 48-yard run for Josh Love and Bridgeport in business now after just one play. Waiting for the chains to get moved on the far side. Bridgeport now has two runners over 100 yards. Love just moved over 100 with that 48-yard run. And it's going to be first down. 10, Bridgeport at the Fairmont 29. Game tied at 14, but the Indians threatening on a big play on the first play of the first, second half. Front line for the Polar Bears. Arbogast, Bracero, Richmond, Angeline, and Bigelow. The delay is because of an issue with the chains on the far side of the field, and now they're calling an official's timeout. Timeout on the field, 11.42 to go. Third quarter, Fairmont 14, Bridgeport 14 on Fun 93-1. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Okay, come back after this. First and 10, Bridgeport at the Fairmont 29. Early in the second half, Rorick takes the snap inside the 20 and run down inside the 15-yard line, but flags are flying as he takes the ball out of bounds. Looks as though they have him marked out at the 15, but there is a penalty flag on the play. Waiting for the call. Personal foul, face mask, Fairmont Senior. So that'll be a 14-yard gain, and then about an eight-yard penalty. And the Indians now are in business. First down and goal to go at the seven-yard line. Tie game, 14-14, early in the third quarter. Single wing, snap to Love, 
Counter play goes to Hathaway, and he slants his way into the end zone for the Bridgeport touchdown. Tanner Hathaway has scored his third TD of the night, and Bridgeport has taken the lead again. It's 20 to 14. Yeah, they've liked that play on the goal line all night. So time for the extra point now. And Avery Williams will kick. Sam Goodwin will be doing the holding. Kick goes from left to right. Good snap, and the kick is blocked, and the Polar Bears recover the football, so the extra point is no good. Timeout on the field with 11.23 to go, third quarter. It's Bridgeport 20, Fairmont 14 on Fun 93-1. Here at the Cracker Barrel, home-style food and great value go hand-in-hand hand with favorites like slow-simmered chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. That possession is one the Polar Bears would like to forget as Bridgeport just ran over Fairmont and took the ball downfield and scored. The crack, though, that the Indians left was the missed extra point. And now Bridgeport leads it 20 to 14, and the Polar Bears will get the football on the kickoff. Roaring kicks from the center of the field at the 40 yard line. Dylan Hours is back to return. The kick sails to the far side and angles and goes out of bounds. So the Polar Bears have the option of taking it on the 35 or making the Indians kick again. And it looks as though Fairmont is going to take the football at the 35-yard line. Nope, it looks like Fairmont's going to make them kick again. I thought that was an option, and they... I know they've talked about that before. With Dylan Hours, the threat he is as a kickoff returner, just make him kick it again from the 35. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, probably if, if anybody other than Hours is back there, that, that's probably the call you want on 35. But I, I, I want to give, I want to get a chance with as many times of Hours getting a chance to run the football back on a kickoff. I like our chances with that. And they tried to kick it away from him, and they did, but it went out of bounds. So. Now Rorig will kick it off again, this time from his 35. He doesn't typically kick it that deep anyway, maybe down to about the 15. So now you would expect him to kick it down to about the 20 if he does, in fact, kick it in the air. And there's a line drive and picked up at the 28-yard line. Polar Bears have it. Gavin Michael with it. It's out over the 35, the 40, and up close to the 45 to the 46-yard line, and that's where the Polar Bears get it. So good decision. Yeah as Fairmont forced them to kick it again, and the Polar Bears have the ball near midfield now. Yeah, real good decision by Coach Bardick. I, I think that was the right call. You don't see that happen very often, and I wonder sometimes in high school football why you don't. It's almost automatic. But the Polar Bears that time decided to go against the grain, and it paid off. Fairmont with the ball, 11-15 on the clock. Bears down by six. First and 10 at their own 47. White here, screen to the far side to Hours, catches it at the 50, down to the 45, the 40, tiptoes down the sidelines and steps on the sidelines inside the 45-yard line at about the 41. Yeah, like the call, get the get the ball in your playmaker's hands as soon as you can, and uh, and, and nice uh, nice completion, nice pitch and catch. 12-yard gain for Fairmont Senior, and. Brody has now completed eight of 16 passes for 161 yards. So Fairmont has it at the 41. Operating closer to their sidelines, which is across the field from us, Bridgeport right down below us. Our broadcast position, not exactly the 50. We're, well, I'm on the 30 and Ray's about on the 35. We're extra far apart tonight. And he likes to get close to the 50. 
from the 41. First down and 10. Here is White here to pass. There's a little screen pass to the far side again, caught by Hours, and he goes down at about the 35-yard line. Yeah, nice, nice job by, on that play by uh, Michael and Dinger. Uh, that, that's what you like to see. Uh, you know, everybody obviously wants to make plays with the football and, and, and catch the football, but uh, it's nice to see each other blocking, blo them blocking for each other. That was a great job. So Fairmont's going back to the well twice now. And it's second down and five at the 36. Navon Jones wide to the near side on this second down play. Whitehair has four receivers bunched to the right. He's back to pass, sets up, fires downfield long. The pass overthrown and incomplete, almost intercepted. It should have been caught by Cale Colaserto but he couldn't hang on to it, and it's third down and five for the Polar Bears. Yeah, Brady would like to have that one back because uh, he had Jones, uh, uh, Jones wide open on that play. Jones on the near side, and the pass went on the other side towards the sidelines. So Fairmont now on a third down and five play. Polar Bears might be in four down territory at the 36. Whitehair, back to pass, right over the middle, wide open, the ball is caught at the 20-yard line, and the Polar Bears have a first down as Cannon Dinger has it at the 20. Yeah, Jeff, they haven't shown a lot of pressure, but on that play they brought pressure from the field and uh, credit uh, Max Bracera with a nice blitz pickup to give uh, Brody time. Nice job. So it's going to be first down 10 Polar Bears, now at the Bridgeport 20. Fairmont down by six points, and the Indians have jumped off sides. Hard count at the line of scrimmage paid off for Fairmont. Yeah, nice, uh, nice job with the hard count. Uh, get some uh, easy yards, and now we're in a manageable first, or first and five. Whitehair's thrown for 182 yards tonight. First and five at the Bridgeport 15. Three receivers to the left side. Whitehair on a design run off the left side, getting pressure. He tries to current the corner, and he can't as he's tackled for a loss back at the 18-yard line. That'll be a three-yard loss for Whitehair. Brody has not been able to use his legs effectively tonight. That was one of the hopes that he would be able to catch Bridgeport off balance a little bit with a running game, but that hasn't worked. It's second and eight for the Polar Bears now at the 18-yard line in Indians territory. Hours in the backfield alongside Whitehair. Three receivers to the left side. And here is Whitehair back to pass, looking to the near side, breaks out of the pocket, down to the 20, slides down inside the 15, and a flag is thrown. And it looks like holding coming up against Fairmont. Right here on it, Cooper, hold, flag on the flag. First flag down at about the 19. Holding is the call against the Polar Bears. It'll be assessed from the line of scrimmage. So that'll take the ball back to the 28 yard line and make it second down at about 18. You gotta step up and make this play. 64 yards and penalties against the Polar Bears tonight. And now, second down for Fairmont Senior. 18 yards to go. Need to get it to the 10 for a first down. Nine minutes to go, third quarter. Bridgeport 20, Fairmont 14. Whitehair back to pass. Over the middle, the pass is caught by Dinger. Diving to the turf at about the 10 yard line. Very close to the first down marker. An 18 yard pass play and the Bears needed 18 for the first down. Yeah, good good protection by that uh, Fairmont senior offensive line. The one thing that is a positive with us throwing the ball as we are, um, it does exert more energy for that D-line. They, they can wear them down that way with the pass rush. Just short of the first down, so third down and inches. And out of the shotgun, it is Whitehair. He gets it, dives down to the line of scrimmage at the 10. And I think he's going to be a little bit short. Fourteen. 
So fourth down, inches to go for the Polar Bears. They have it at the 10 yard line. Trying to draw them off sides with a hard count. That doesn't work. 7.50 turning clock. Fairmont fourth down and inches. Whitehair back to pass. Over the middle of the pass is caught by Michael in the end zone. It's a polar bear touchdown. Gavin Michael slanting into the end zone. Catches the pass from Whitehair. And the polar bears have tied the game. What a throw by Brody Whitehair. I mean, that was just incredible. Uh, he... he <laughs> He, he put it where Gavin Michael had the only chance to catch that ball, and that, that was just impressive. Nice, nice job. So Cam Peschel ready to attempt the extra point for the Polar Bears and a chance to give Fairmont its first lead of the night. Ball down, and the kick is blocked at the line of scrimmage. How about that? Timeout on the field. 7.44 to go, third quarter. It's Fairmont 20, Bridgeport 20 on Fun 93-1. National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. A lot of excitement on that polar bear drive, and it ends in a Fairmont touchdown to tie the game, and then Cam Peschel attempting the extra point, and it's blocked. The first extra point the polar bears have missed with Peschel kicking this season, blocked at the line of scrimmage. It looked as though there was a little bit of a mishandling at the hold, whether the snap was a little off, but a little bit there. Did you see that, Ray? Yeah, and, and uh, you know, that, that, that was unfortunate, but we... Uh we just uh, we just got to come back on this defensive possession and uh, let's get a stop. Here's Dinger kicking off end over end and Rorick catches it at the 14. Gets to the 20, running wide to the near side, looking for the sidelines, turns the corner at the 30 and then grabbed from behind. At about the 35 yard line, the Bridgeport fans didn't like the fact that they grabbed him from behind, just pulled his shirt, didn't grab him by the collar. And the ball is Bridgeport's at the 34-yard line. That was Tristan Wills, 5'6", junior, making the stop for the Polar Bears. First down, 10 Indians. So they go back to work. The last possession was their most impressive one of the night. They broke off some big runs where earlier in the game they were getting at a chunks at a time. That one, they got those big chunks. Now the ball is at the 34 on the near hash marks as Bridgeport goes from left to right. Game tied, 7.35 on the clock in the third quarter. Here is Love up the middle. Love crashes over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Arbogast in on the tackle for the Polar Bears. A gain of three. Second down and seven. Yeah, they came with the trap that time. Uh, we did a better job that time of staying, uh, staying with the leverage and playing with good pad level. Josh Love has run for 113 yards tonight, and his partner in the backfield, Zach Rorick, 160 for Bridgeport. Second and seven at the Indians, 37. Rory gets the snap. He's sweeping to the left side. Gets a block along the corner. Gets up to the 40 and then has run out of bounds along the first down sticks on the far side of the field. Going to be about a yard short of the first down. It's going to be third down and one. A six-yard gain for Zach Rory. Third down one for the Indians. Ball just over the 43. They need to get it to the 44. Third down at one. 
Claremont crowding the line of scrimmage on this fourth and short play. Love gets the snap up the middle, and he is hit by Bigelow, and then dives over the 45 for a first down up close to the 46-yard line. We'll get three, and the Indians get a first down. And yeah, we've got to find a way to, to get a turnover here. Uh, you know, the first person that comes in uh, needs to make a sure tackle, but we need to have somebody come in and try to, to strip the ball because we need a turnover, we need a fumble. I like the way you think. You're thinking positive tonight. <laughs> Indians near midfield in a tie game, 2020, six and a half to go here in the third quarter. Rorig and Love, the running backs. Snap to Love, there's the counter to Hathaway and flags at the line of scrimmage. Ball start the call against Bridgeport. Five yard penalty will take the football back and make it first and 15. Ball comes back to the 41. First and 15, Bridgeport. Wing back, Hathaway to the right. Same formation for the Indians. And there is the toss coming back to Rorig. Rorig gets to the 45 and up to the 46. Cockleton brought down there. Stopping the play by, by Dakota Nisley. Back at about the original line of scrimmage. So it will be second and 10 after that five yard gain for Rorig. Second down, 10 yards to go. Indians on their 46-yard line. This second down play. Handoff goes to Rorig, and he is short tackled by Gavin Michael at the 48-yard line. Gavin has been in on a ton of polar bear tackles tonight. He'll gain two. It's third down and eight. Yeah, great job by Gavin Michael on that play coming up and filling. Uh, just been all around, been all over the field tonight. Ball at the 48-yard line. Big play here for Bridgeport. They have succeeded on third and longs frequently tonight. The Polar Bears would love to get a stop here. They quickly come to the line of scrimmage, and here is Rorig sweeping to the left side. Rorig is bottled up and brought down after a gain up to the 50. He's going to be about four yards short of the first down, maybe five. And great hustle by uh, Gap Michael. Just, just tremendous. It's a four yard gain for Rorick, and it's going to be fourth down and six for the Indians. Big decision now for Tyler Ferris because the ball is just at about midfield. And I think they're going to let the play clock run out and maybe call a timeout. Play clock's down to 10, and I haven't seen the play go in yet. And that's what's going to happen. Timeout called by Bridgeport with the football at the Fairmont 49, looking at a fourth down and six. Timeout on the field with the score. Fairmont 20, Bridgeport 20 on Fun 93-1. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Big situation in this game. It's fourth down and six for Bridgeport with the ball just over the 50. They need to get it to the Fairmont 44 for a first down. 
The Indians are coming out as though they're going for it. Clock shows 3.46 to go in the third quarter, game tied 20-20. Now they send a wide receiver to the right side, and I would guess that's a decoy. I can't imagine they would pass on a fourth and six. Here comes the snap, it comes to Rorick. And he is stopped at the 48-yard line. It was Logan Canfield who brings him down, and the Polar Bears take over on downs after a two-yard gain, and Fairmont has the football with 3.41 to go in the third quarter. Huge play by Canfield. Way to come up. Uh, that's, that's the way you feel, and uh, that's a huge play. So Fairmont with the football near midfield now at the 48 in their own territory. White outs left and right. White here back to pass, steps up in the pocket. Now he's running with the football, gets to midfield, and he's tackled and brought down there. Yeah, that time they ran a little overload uh, with their front uh, uh, to the field, and, uh, and they tried to, uh, to outnumber us on, on our uh, offensive right. Two-yard gain for Brody. It's second and eight for the Polar Bears at the 50-yard line. Fairmont 20. Bridgeport 20. The Polar Bears have a little opportunity now. White here back to pass. Downfield, the pass is incomplete. At about the 40-yard line, the pass was intended for Logan Canfield. He couldn't hang on to it. It was catchable, but it would have been a difficult catch. It was down low, but he couldn't bring it in. Yeah, it's big third down. Um, we have to be ready for the pressure if they bring it, but... Uh, this is this is a huge third down. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. White here, back to pass, third down and eight. Steps up in the pocket, fires downfield, and a pass is broken up and intercepted at the 18-yard line and taken out to the 30. The Indians have the football. Colasanto with a pass interception. Bridgeport has it at the 30-yard line. So Fairmont with its first turnover of the night. And Bridgeport has the football. Didn't see Dylan Hours in on that last Fairmont offensive possession. And I don't see him on defense. Bridgeport with the ball, 2.51 to go, third quarter, first and 10. And there is the counter play to Hathaway, and he slashes his way up to the 38-yard line. He'll get about six. Game tied, 20-20. Fairmont missed an opportunity there. And now Bridgeport has the ball back. Clock turns inside, 2.25 to go, third quarter. Each team has scored a touchdown in the second half, but both teams missed their extra point. Second and four Indians. Rorig gets the snap, and Rorig takes it to the 40-yard line and is stopped there. He'll be a yard short of the first down. Hundred and eighty-two rushing yards for Rorig tonight. Third down, about two yards to go now. They set the ball at the forty. He needs the forty-two for a first down. They knew coming in, the coaches knew that it was going to be tough to stop him. Uh, he's a very good back, so we, we we've got to find a way to rally to him. Third down, short. This is Bridgeport specialty. Half away, wing back right. He gets the handoff on the counter play, takes it to the left, and takes it up to about the 44-yard line, and then gang tackle. <laughs> Hathaway gets Bridgeport's 13th first down of the night. And it's first and 10 Indians at the Bridgeport 43. We're down to a minute, 10 to go. Third quarter, Fairmont 20, Bridgeport 20. 
The Indians have won three straight in this series, and that followed a four-game winning streak for the Polar Bears. First down and 10. Love gets the snap. Love off the right side, gets an opening, and gets to the 50. Bounces off a tackle there and goes down inside the 50 at about the 48-yard line. Get about nine yards on that carry, and it's going to bring up a second down and about a yard to go. Yeah, we brought a blitz that time, and uh, you know, sometimes when you bring the blitz, it makes you a little weaker uh, on one side, and, uh, and that's kind of what happened there. The ball at the Fairmont 48. Second down and a yard to go for the Indians. Snap comes to Love. There's the counter to Hathaway. Hathaway off the left side. Takes the football inside the 40, the 35, and down to about the 32-yard line. A big gain. They get about 16 yards and an Indians first down. That will most likely be the final play of the third quarter. First down number 14 for Bridgeport. And that is the end of the third quarter from Wayne Jamison Field in Bridgeport. The score after three, Fairmont Senior 20, Bridgeport 20 on Fun 93-1. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel. Take care now. Ready for the fourth quarter in a tie game, 20-20, but Bridgeport threatening with the ball at the Fairmont 33-yard line, first down and 10. And there is Rory carrying the football. He dives down to the 30. Logan Canfield trips him up after a gain of three yards. Yeah, Jeff, we've got to find a way to, to come up with a big play here. Somebody's got to step up. Uh, that defense has been on the field a long time, so uh, obviously getting tired, but uh, somebody's got to find a way to dig deep and get a uh, make a big play here. And the Polar Bears are playing without Dylan Hours. He wasn't in the, the lineup the last couple of possessions, and that makes a big difference. Second down and seven for the Indians at the Fairmont 30. Snap to Love. Love up the middle. Love with running room inside the 25, the 20, and down to about the 22-yard line. Dakota Nisley brings him down, down to the 18, rather. It'll be a gain of about eight yards on the play, and Bridgeport goes first down and 10. Call it at the 19-yard line. So the Indians have been unstoppable on this drive. Unstoppable on the first one, but the Polar Bear stopped them on the last one, but then couldn't take advantage. First down and 10 at the Fairmont 19. Counter play comes to Hathaway. Hathaway breaks through inside the 15, down to the 10, still running inside the 5, and is dragged down at the 2-yard line by Gavin Michael. He's ran that counter play really well tonight, uh, you know, putting his foot in the ground and getting north and south, and that's what he did on that play. So now, first down goal to go for the Indians from the three-yard line. The Indians, one pass attempt tonight, and it was intercepted. Oh, 
So Bridgeport, first down, goal to go. Ball just inside the three. Snap to Love. Love crashes up the middle and takes it down to the goal line and into the end zone for the Bridgeport touchdown. Josh Love takes it in, and Bridgeport leads it 26-20. to 20. Yeah, This is a big, big point after uh, attempt here. They have a different kicker now as Zach Anglin will kick after Avery Williams missed the last one. Ball down on the tee. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Timeout on the field. 10.20 to go in the fourth quarter from Bridgeport. It's the Indians 27, Fairmont Senior 20 on Fun 93-1. National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. Tight game here at Wayne Jamison Field. It has been a game that has never been more than a touchdown separating these two teams. Fairmont now trails 27-20, but the Polar Bears have never led. They had a chance after tying the game at 20, but then missed the extra point, just as Bridgeport had done moments earlier. So now the Indians have a 27-20 lead. Dylan Hours out of the lineup for the Polar Bears. We don't know anything about his physical condition, but we know he's not playing, and Cannon Dinger is back deep to return for Fairmont. Here is the kick, end over end, and Dinger will go back and get it at the 11. Comes up to the 15, he's at the 20, trying to get outside, now cuts it up at the 25, and he's brought down there. And the Polar Bears will have the ball first down and 10, just short of the 25-yard line. 10-12 to go. And without Dylan, Ray, that makes a big difference to this polar bear offense. Yeah, it does. Leadership, uh, you know, also, uh, you know, just having an athlete on the field can make plays. But uh, we just have to have somebody step up um, when their number's called or now. Ball set down at the 24. First and 10 polar bears from there. Canfield, Michael, and Jones are wide outs to the right. Dinger wide left. Damani Johnson, the running back. Brody White here at quarterback. First down and 10. Michael back to pass. Near side pass is caught at the 30-yard line by Canfield and then stretches out up to about the 33. Yeah, nice ball by Brody. Uh, hit Canfield in stride. He turned up field and got a nice gain on first down. Got to mark it at the 33, so it'll be a nine yard game. Fairmont quickly to the line of scrimmage now. Second down and one. White here out of the pistol formation. Damani Johnson behind him. Lots of time on the play clock, it's just at 18. And here is the handoff to Johnson off the left side. He breaks it to the outside, gets to the 35, up to the 40, and over the 40 for a polar bear first down up to about the 42-yard line. Great job. That's what we need. We've got to still try to find a way to, to have some type of run game so we're not one-dimensional uh, in this fourth quarter. That is the first time the polar bears have run for a first down tonight, and that's the most yardage Fairmont has had on the ground this evening, an eight-yard gain. First down and 10 at the 41-yard line. Canfield, Michael wide to the near side, along with Jones. Damani Johnson gets the handoff wide to the left side, run out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, just on our, our left side, they they, uh, they played that pretty well. Um, got a little penetration and uh, enforced them to go east and west. 
Second down and 12, the ball back at the 39. Jones wide near side along with Michael and Canfield. Dinger wide to the left. Right here, screen pass caught by Michael at the 40. He gets up to the 45, to the sidelines at the 50, down the sidelines and hit inside the 40 yard line. And a flag thrown up at the 45. Yeah, it looked like that was behind the play. I, I don't know who they're calling, but uh, it was behind the play. I don't even think it had an effect on the play. Holding is called against the Polar Bears. Flag thrown at about the 45 yard line. Work it! You gotta work it! Let's go! So that sets it back at the 35. It's going to be second down for the Polar Bears. Second down and about 16 to go for the first down. Right here to pass. Runs out of the pocket, over the middle. The pass is caught by Michael beautifully near midfield, and he goes down at about the 49-yard line. It'll be a 15-yard pass play. Uh, that was a great job by uh, Brody buying a little time and, uh, and finding uh, uh, Michael. And also a nice job of Michael recognizing coverage and sitting down in the zone. Great job all around. Third down. Couple for the Polar Bears. Front line remains the same. Hayhurst, Richmond, Arbogast, Angeline, and Bigelow. Third down and two. Pass play far side. Overthrown. Intended for Canfield. He couldn't get it. And it's going to bring up a fourth and two for the Polar Bears. It's one of Brody's few poor throws tonight. If he puts that one on target, it's a Fairmont first down. Yeah, big play here. And the Polar Bears are lining up to go for it. Fourth and two. Expect a hard count. The officials trying to get the play clock reset. They do, so Fairmont has lots of time. Here's Whitehair to pass. Runs out of the pocket. Looks, looks. Needs to get rid of it, throws it downfield, and the pass is intercepted at the 40-yard line by Rorick, and Bridgeport has the ball. It looked like Brady was going to take off the run, but then he bought, still was buying some time, and then he was still trying to make a play. So Zach Rorick with the pass interception, that's the second interception for Brody Whitehair, and it comes on consecutive possessions. And now Bridgeport with the football, 7.32 on the game clock here in the fourth quarter. The Indians lead 27-20, and the ball is at the Indians 49. Down and 10 Indians now. Leading the Polar Bears by a touchdown. There is the counter play to Hathaway. Hathaway runs hard down to the 44-yard line, and he'll get about five yards on that carry. Aaron Boda had his arms wrapped around him, but Hathaway got nice yardage. Got to mark it down at the 44. Make it second down and three, a seven-yard game. Yeah, we know what's coming here. It's just going to be a heavy dose of, uh, of of all the run game. We just we have to find a way to make a play. If uh, you know, we might be needing to take a chance or two here in the blitz game. We might have to do that. Bridgeport perfectly content now to take all the time it can with a seven-point lead and the ball in Fairmont territory at the 44. Rorick fakes it to Hathaway and keeps it, and he's brought down after a very short game. Reed Lister on the tackle for the Polar Bears. It's going to be second down. No gain on the play. Yeah, very or well. Third down, rather. Third down and three. Very well defended on that play. That's the 26th carry for Rorick tonight. He has 185 yards. Reed 
Third down three, Bridgeport. Leading the Polar Bears 27-20, 6-10, turning clock, fourth quarter from Wayne Jamison Field. Third and short, snap, counter, Hathaway, Hathaway, runs hard and with just brute strength gets the first down as he takes it to the 40. He was stopped shy of the stick, but he just wouldn't go down. Yeah, it's the same play they've ran all night. Uh, it's, you know, as we said, it's something that once they find success for something, they stay with it, and then they stay with that all night. First down and 10 Indians from the Fairmont 40 on the near hash marks. 5.40 on the clock. Love takes the snap. And Love off the right side will squirm forward for maybe a yard. Not much. Left side of the Polar Bear defense didn't give any ground that time, and it will be a gain of a yard, second down and nine. Yeah, Jeff, we know we need to take some chances, but we need to have the second and third tackler come in and, and, and make the effort to try to strip, strip the ball. We have to have a turnover. Second down, they've moved the ball to inside the 38 now, so it's going to be second and about eight. From the 38-yard line, here is Rorig sweeping to the left side, grabbed from behind and brought down at the 33-yard line by Gavin Michael. Short of the first down by about three yards. It'll be third down and three. The ball at the 32. You need to take it just inside the 30 for a first down. So third down, about three yards to go for the Indians. And there is the counter play. Coming this way to Hathaway, and he's smothered back at the 32-yard line. He's short of the first down. It's going to be fourth down and three. Polar Bears played that one well. Damani Johnson for the Polar Bears. Fourth down, three for Bridgeport. Yeah, very nice job of staying home by, uh, by Johnson. Big fourth down. Got to make a play here. Game clock down to three minutes and 30 seconds. Bridgeport 27, Fairmont 20. Bridgeport number nine in triple A. Fairmont senior number four in double A. Here's the big play. Fourth down for the Indians. Three yards to go at the Fairmont 32. Fairmont crowds the line of scrimmage. Long count for the Indians trying to draw them off sides. Play clock down to five. And now timeout called by Tyler Ferris on the Bridgeport sidelines. Timeout Indians, 3.01 to go fourth quarter. It's Bridgeport 27, Fairmont Senior 20 on 93.1 WFGM. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. It's down to a fourth down and three for Bridgeport. The football mark at the 32. They need to take it just inside the 30 for a first down. Game clock shows three minutes and one second to go. Indians come to the line of scrimmage now. They tried to draw Fairmont offsides on that last series, but couldn't. And now they'll try to get the first down on fourth and short from the 32. 
There's the snap, and there's a flag at the line of scrimmage. Looks like a penalty pending against the Indians. I think they moved. False start is the call against Bridgeport. That'll make a fourth and three, about a fourth and eight. Now it becomes really interesting to see what they'll do. Uh, takes the ball up to about the 37. They need to get inside the 30 for a first down. Remember, the Polar Bears are playing without Dylan Hours. I wouldn't be surprised to see a, we could see a quick kick here. Fourth down, seven yards to go. Ball back at the 37-yard line for Bridgeport. And there is the pitch coming Ball. back and a fumble, and the Polar Bears have recovered, and Fairmont has the football. Near the 45-yard line. Fairmont Sr. has the ball with 2.55 to go. Big play, big play. We've got, we've got the score here. Set the ball down at the 43. 2.55 showing on the clock. Fairmont has all of its timeouts left and the Polar Bears trail 27-20. Fairmont sends three receivers to the right. Kamani Johnson lines up behind the quarterback right here. And Johnson gets the handoff up the middle, and he's brought down after a one-yard gain to the 44. Yeah, they were trying to strip the ball that time. We've got to have ball security here because the, they will try to strip it. Uh, great job by Johnson holding on to the ball. He's the Polar Bears' leading rusher tonight, seven yards. Second and ten from the 44-yard line. Actually, second and nine. White here. Back to pass, and he's sacked, and the ball pops loose. And let's see who's got it. And Bridgeport's got the ball. Brody Whitehair fumble, and the Indians have the ball at the Paramount 28 with 2.19 to go. So Fairmont now has its third turnover of the night. And Bridgeport has it first down and 10 at the Fairmont 28-yard line. And there's Rorig off the right side, take it in for the touchdown. Zach Rorick takes it in for the touchdown from the 28 yard line. There was a flag thrown at the end of the play. But it's a 28 yard run for Zach Rorig and that will pretty much put the game away for the Indians. Dead ball, personal foul. Called against Fairmont. Touchdown. They'll assess the penalty on the kickoff. Fairmont trails now 33 to 20 though, with just 2.13 to go. Zach Anglin will kick the extra point for Bridgeport. So the score is not going to be indicative of the battle here tonight. Polar Bears had a shot near midfield just moments ago, but then turned the ball over, and Bridgeport scores on the first play. Ready for Anglin's kick from right to left. His kick is up, and it is good. Time out on the field. 2.13 to go, fourth quarter. The score, Bridgeport 34, Fairmont 20. 
93.1 WFTN. National Bank, where you can purchase or refinance your home with the No Down Payment Champion Mortgage. No down payment, no private mortgage insurance, no kidding. Visit your local branch to get started today. City National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. To learn more, log on to mortgage.bankitcity.com. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. Bridgeport has taken a two-touchdown lead now, converting a polar bear fumble into a touchdown one play later. And now that mountain is a little steep. It's 34-20. The Indians have the lead. 15-yard penalty assessed against Fairmont on the kickoff. We'll take the ball to the polar bear. Well, we'll wait till they mark it off. Should be down at the 45-yard line in polar bear territory where the Indians will kick it. And that's where it is. Kick will go from right to left. Rorig will be doing the kicking. Cannon Dinger is back deep. We don't know what happened with Dylan Hours. He did start the second half, but did not return after the first couple of series. There is the kickoff and Dinger scoops it up at the four. He gets up to the 10 and run out of bounds over the 15 at about the 18 yard line. And Fairmont has the ball with 208 to go trailing 34 to 20. Next week it's another triple A opponent for the Polar Bears on the road at University. Remember that's a 730 kickoff in Morgantown. Airtime will be 10 after 7. Brody Whitehair for Fairmont Senior, 15 of 28 tonight for 235 yards. And he'll be back throwing now on a first down and 10 at the Fairmont 19. Whitehair to pass, getting pressure, chased out of the pocket to the far side of the field, gets upfield, back to the line of scrimmage, and then runs out of bounds. Takes it up to the 21. It'll be a two-yard game. And he's out of bounds, so it'll be second down and eight. Brody has not had a lot of time to set up and throw tonight. No, he's not. And it, it's it's tough when you when you have pressure being brought by just the, the four down line, and that's they're dropping seven in coverage. There's not a lot of windows to throw the football. White air back to pass again. Getting pressure again. Sends it downfield for Dinger, and the pass out of bounds, incomplete. He's getting a lot of pressure from Wes Brown, a 5'10", 275-pound junior lineman for Bridgeport. He has been after Brody pretty much the entire night. Yeah, that whole front four for the uh, Bridgeport, you got to credit them. They've, they've played a pretty good game. Uh, to be able to keep five in the box and, and you know, and... and Affect the run game. That's that's pretty impressive. Right here, back to pass. Third down and eight. Steps up in the pocket, going downfield long, and the pass is just out of the outstretched arms of the intended receiver at the 30-yard line, and that was Tavion Thornton. He had a step on the defender. A perfect pass would have been a touchdown, and it was just almost a perfect pass. That would have made some uh, excitement. So now it's fourth down and eight for the Polar Bears with just 1.45 to go in the game. Bridgeport leads at 34-20, so the Polar Bears are pretty much fighting for a miracle anyway. And now it's fourth down and eight yards to go. Yeah, those receivers have to know where the first down marker is. Right here to pass over the middle. The pass is incomplete. He was looking for Navon Jones, but... Jones and the ball were in two different spots. And the pass falls incomplete. Bridgeport takes over. And we'll have the football with a minute 41 to go. And that'll just about wrap it up.
Yeah, you have to credit uh, Bridgeport uh, up front, both offense and defensive lines. I mean, you just have to call it like it is. They, they played real physical tonight, and, uh, and, and they, they won up front. Ball at the 21, first and 10, Indians. A minute 41 to go. Bridgeport leads it 34 to 20. There's Rorick carrying the ball off the right side. Gets inside the 10, inside the 5, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Rorick runs it in from 21 yards out. And the Indians score again and lead it now 40 to 20. Yeah, like I said, Jeff, this is not going to be indicative of the uh, the game that, that was here tonight because it, 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 it was a, a pretty tightly contested battle for most of the night. Just a minute 34 left, and Anglin will attempt the extra point for Bridgeport. And the kick is up, and this one is no good wide to the right. So the extra point fails, and there's time out on the field. We have a minute 34 left in this game. The score, Bridgeport 40, Fairmont 20 on fun 93-1. 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Time running out here in Bridgeport, and the Polar Bears just about ready to absorb their first loss of the season as Bridgeport has extended its lead now to 40-20 to with about three minutes to go in the game. Fairmont was down by a touchdown with the ball near midfield. So you can see how things have kind of fallen apart in the last couple minutes. Bridgeport ready to kick off. Rorig will kick, end over end, and taken on the run at the 16-yard line. That's Tavion Thornton, and he gets the ball up over the 30 to about the 31. Tavion Thornton carrying the football on the kickoff return, and the Polar Bears have it first down and 10 at their own 31-yard line. Bridgeport subbing out its frontline players. See Wes Brown coming to the sidelines. First and 10 for the Polar Bears now. And there's the handoff to Damani Johnson wide to the left side. And Johnson takes it out over the 35, close to the 40 yard line, and then tackled out of bounds. It'll be a Polar Bear first down. And yeah, good physical run by, uh, by Johnson. Um, Let's try to end this game on a, on a positive note. Let's try to get something in the end zone uh, going into next week. For Damani Johnson, he now has 20 rushing yards, and that leads all Polar Bears. In fact, he's the only Fairmont runner with positive yardage tonight. Game clock stopped at a minute 18 to go. It's first and 10 at the Polar Bear 43, and there is the handoff again. Football taken out over the 45 and up... Over the 50, that's Chris Wilson carrying the football for the Polar Bears. He'll get about eight yards on the play, and it'll be second down and two. Second and two. Wilson, the running back behind Whitehair, who's back to pass, sets up, fires downfield long, and a diving attempt by Dinger at the 10-yard line is no good. Can't quite get to the ball. 
Yeah, this, this is definitely not the result that we wanted tonight, but uh, I, I can tell you, Jeff, I'm very, very impressed with uh, with Brody tonight as far as his toughness and how he's stay, you know, he, he's hung in there all night, and uh, he's shown me a lot about his, uh, his heart tonight. Third down, two yards to go for the Polar Bears. And there is White here on a keeper, takes it inside the 50, slides down inside the 45-yard line for a Fairmont first down, and it'll be a four-yard gain for Brody White here. Yeah, smart move by Brody right there. We need, uh, we definitely need him as the season goes on. First down, Polar Bears. White here back to pass. Firing it down the far sidelines, and the pass is overthrown incomplete, intended for Tavion Thornton. That'll make it second down and 10 with 25 seconds to go in the game. Bridgeport leads it 40 to 20. This, uh, this game was decided just a few minutes ago. We're midway through the fourth quarter, and the Polar Bears had the ball in a tie game. Second down, 10 for Fairmont. At the 45, White here on a keeper, goes down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it'll bring up a third down for Fairmont. Clock turning inside 12 seconds, and the Polar Bears are not going to run another play. Time is going to run out, and this game is going to end.